thank you, thank you, Ken, for for agreeing to to come on onto this soon. I mean, I, there's a lot of uh, people who are really active in fighting against what the government's doing at the moment um, in different groups. We've got uh, enough is enough. Uh, we've got People's Assembly. We've got Don't Pay. We've got a Unite Group, um, and there seems to be lots of energy for campaigning against what the government's doing and, and fighting back also against what the Labour Party is not doing. Uh, I'm just wondering, how on earth can we get all these people together to make an effective um, united campaign that will change things? I mean, you've been around a, a while uh, and may be able to suggest uh, some way through this. Can, can you help us? Well, I, I've got a thought or two, Crispin. I mean, it's it's a really important issue you raise. I think it's the central issue. Um, how does the left have a political presence? And I think it's worth remembering, or just setting out two or three points before, you know, I make what is a very sort of humble suggestion. Um, first of all, just consider that the Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn became the biggest party in Europe. It nearly won the 2017 election. It had a membership of 600,000 or so. And it had a program, a well thought out, constructive program that would have begun the transformation of society in the interests of working class people. Now, that, that's a considerable political achievement. And now it's wiped from history. There, it doesn't exist. In the mainstream media, it doesn't exist. You, you, hear, you never hear the people who, who promoted it, who, uh, who worked for it. You never hear the people who argued for it. You never hear Jeremy or John. Um, you never hear any of the, the leading members of the party at that time to defend and put forward those ideas. And that's an extraordinary achievement by the ruling class to remove that whole moment from history. Current the contemporary uh, uh, understanding of contemporary history. Secondly, Starmer will not change. Starmer's control on the Labour Party, his stranglehold, his bureaucratic control, uh, his destruction of the left. I mean, hundreds of thousands of people, 100,000 people left last year, and how many the, the year before, who knows? His, he was dishonest. He said he would uh, unite the party. He didn't. He knew he wouldn't. He said he would maintain the radical uh, programme. He, he knew he wouldn't. He put his arm around Jeremy Corbyn, saying he would, uh, indicating his personal warmth. He knew he would put the knife in his back. The stranglehold he and his clique have is with us for the next few years. That's a reality. We, 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 we surely everyone has to accept that. The third point is that whatever we do next, there has to be a, a path to political power. We were so close to it in 2017. The time is running out. The climate emergency is desperate. The poverty people will face is desperate. We can't, we can't play such a long game now. And we, we have a, there's a mass of people who supported Jeremy Corbyn are still there, maybe half a million. We can't wait for years to have a path to political power. And our next move has to, we have to see a way that we can achieve that. I think that's essential. And we must always remember that sectarianism, when you refer to it, oh, there's this campaign, there's that campaign, there's the other campaign. The sectarianism will destroy us. It always has. It's fermented by the right wing. Again, we know. And we cannot, we have to have the discipline to reject sectarianism of different groups saying, Yes, uh, we must all be united. You follow my flag. You know we have to end that. So that those are the those are the basic principles, that, the basic ideas. I think that we have to accept. So what do we do? My suggestion, very humble suggestion. It's no criticism of the people who are doing such magnificent work in the campaigns and enough is enough. The People's Assembly and all the others. I mean, they do amazing work and the fantastic activists and I would only want to support them. But I think there has to be a next step. What should the next step be? I think it is worth think, considering this. 
the, the next step is led by the unions, as enough is enough is. It's led by the unions as the original Labour Party was set up, led by the unions, when they decided that the, the Liberal Party would no longer represent their interests. And, and that's the same now for, for us. The Labour Party does not represent our interests now, at this moment. And the, the critical point came when Starmer said, if you are on a picket line, you're not in my team. Now, when he says that to the unions, you cannot join a picket line. That's, that's undermining the unions, our basic power, that is to withdraw your labor. If you can't organize a strike, and a picket line is an essential ingredient to organizing a strike. If you cannot organize as a strike, you have no power. And that challenge to the unions must not go unanswered. So if the unions don't accept that challenge and fight back, then, then they're rendered, then he's won. You know, we might as well give up, give up the ghost. So I think we have to accept that challenge. The unions have to accept that challenge. And I suggest this, that they set up an independent labor movement or we'll call it by another name. The name is not important, but that's substantially what it would be. And that's, that should be funded, have a basic structure, basic infrastructure with researchers and with a, a basic organization so that it was a resource. Everyone should join it. All the activists, all the people outside the party, join as individuals, all the people inside the Labour Party, join organizations that affiliate, whether it's unions, whether it's uh, campaigns, whether it's left groups, whether it's charities, community organizations, all who care about the great issues in the environment, our health service, housing, poverty, whatever we care about, we all join it. And I reckon there could be a membership of half a million plus very quickly. We would be the biggest political force in the country, led by the trade unions and their strikes, their strike action puts them on the news anyway. So we would be in the mainstream media and I think it should be based on the 2017 election manifesto, because that's what we all united around. That's what we nearly won. The basic principles are all there, all there. Defend human rights, defend the environment, public services owned, owned and um, controlled by, by, the, by, the, by, the, by the people. Um, everyone on trade union contracts, no outsourcing and the rest. Big housing programme and so on. That's what we are based on. And that we have speakers on all the main topics. I mean, we have a wealth of talent, Crispin. We have academics, we have, of course, people who are politically active. We have professionals, as in the health service, as in all the main areas, the environment, in human rights, and so on. We could wipe the floor with, um, we could wipe the floor with Labour's shadow cabinets. I mean, they pale by comparison. And the Tories, we, our people would know more and they would be, um, they would have a wealth of knowledge and experience that people would trust. I think th th those are the essence, of, that's the essence of it. And everybody must join. And then we would, we would have a political presence that I think you couldn't, you couldn't deny. The mainstream media could not deny this. And then we're in, and then we would reach a point at which we would say, look, this is a program that will, that will, that will, see, will rescue the future for, ordinary, for the working class people of this country. This is the program. It is not represented by current parties, certainly not by Labour and obviously not anyone else. It's not represented. We have a problem of representation. We are a, a movement of half a million or more. We have to, we have to stand. And then that would be the challenge to Starmer because, and the right-wing Labour MPs. They'd see their seats disappear. So if, the, if they were to move left, that's the way to do it. And if they didn't move left, I think we, we'd make significant inroads I, and who knows. Who knows what we could achieve. But that's the next step, to build on the campaigns that exist and to establish a political presence. So you're talking about the, the, the basis of a party. 
effectively from this that would 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 stand in elections uh, not just uh, groups that would speak about what they think is right and wrong but something that would threaten uh, Keir Starmer's Labour at the ballot box? Well, we, we, we proceed in stages, but we'd be in a position to establish a party because it would, be, it would have the, the substance and the public presence that would recognise that it had a serious programme that was not otherwise available. So it would, it would be the possibility of a party. But it, the key thing is to keep Jeremy's, that half a million together who supported Jeremy and John, and if we start a party, a party now, the people in the Labour Party who are still there couldn't, couldn't be part of it so, and wouldn't be part of it. So I think it's essential that we build a movement first. I mean, remember the old uh, wobbly slogan, agitate, educate, organise. The campaigns are agitating, the campaigns are educating up to a point, but they can't organise for, polit for political intervention because who are they trying to persuade? You know, with that, you have to have a party to intervene politically in our system. Right. So we, it is to create the basis for a party. If that were the, the next step, at the moment it's a political movement.